Hi, I'm Joe, the Clinical Operations Manager with Surgical Direct. Today we're going to talk about the veterinary endoscopy system. These are the items that are included with our veterinary endoscopy system. A power cable, a leak tester, the manual, the control box, a camera head, an SD card, water bottle, and a video cable. This is our one and a half meter veterinary endoscope. It includes a soaking cap, extra biopsy port caps, an air water valve, suction valve, cleaning adapters, and a cleaning brush. This is the control body of the endoscope. It houses the air water channel, the biopsy channel, the control knob, and the video buttons. Button one takes a picture, button two takes a video. This is the video hub of the scope. It includes the light post, the air post, the water inlet, the suction, and the video signal plug. This is the distal end of the scope. It has a plastic C cover, a water director, a lens, and two light outlets. Damage can be easily done to any portion of this scope by allowing it to hit the hard ground. This is the bending rubber section of the scope. The bending rubber is a soft piece of rubber that allows the scope to bend at the tip. This portion can easily be damaged by a sharp instrument or an animal's tooth. To prepare the scope for use, insert the blue air water valve, suction valve, and attach the biopsy port cap. This is the veterinary bronchoscope. To prepare it for use, insert the suction cap and the biopsy port cap. Now we'll prepare the video endoscopy system for use. First, attach the right angled end of the video cable to the base of the processor. Next, attach the other end. Be sure to tighten all four screws so there is no interference. Next, attach the supplied power cable to the back of the unit. Attach the video hub to the processor. Be sure to hear the click. Then attach the video signal cable with the red dot up to the processor and again with the red dot up to the video hub. Next, insert the SD card into the unit. Attach suction to the Christmas tree adapter. Fill the water bottle three quarters full with water. Hang it on the side of the processor. Attach the other end to the water port on the scope. Be sure it's properly seated or you will have a leak and will not have enough air pressure to perform your procedure. To turn on the system, simply push the power button. You'll want to set the time when you receive your system. Press and hold the automatic white balance button. From here you can adjust the time. Using the up down brightness arrows, you can toggle through the time and date menu. By pressing snap, you can adjust the time up. By pressing record, you can adjust the time down. To save, press the automatic white balance again. When setting up for any procedure, you want to have a bowl prepared with water, enzymatic cleaner, and a soft sponge. The next step is to turn on your suction. Make sure it's set to high. Turn the light on and the air water. You'll need to white balance by either using a white sponge and completely enveloping the scope or a white balance cup as I have here. Quickly push the automatic white balance button. On the front of the processor, you'll find the light control knob. You'll always want the light set to high. There's also a file button. At the end of each procedure, if you push the file button, it will store the pictures or video taken and create one file. After each procedure, by pushing the file button, you'll create a new folder. There's a record button for recording video, a snap button for taking pictures. There's a saturation up-down, a color up-down, and a bright up-down. It is usually not necessary to use these adjustments as the scope automatically is adjusted. If you start finding that you need to adjust any of these often, contact your sales consultant and he will give you further instructions. On the control body of the scope, 
you'll find a right and left control knob, an up down control knob, a locking mechanism for the up down, and a locking mechanism for the right left. You'll also find the number one button which is used for taking pictures and the number two button which is used for taking video. The red valve is used for suction. The blue valve is used for both air and water. If you lightly press the blue button without depressing the blue button, you will get your airflow. If you push the blue button, you will get your water flow. At the end of every procedure, it's important to thoroughly clean each endoscope. The channels inside the scope have been exposed to proteins which can stick to the scope if not properly cleaned immediately after the procedure. Start by turning off the light, then inserting the distal end of the scope into your enzymatic solution. Depress the suction button and suction through all of the enzymatic cleaner. You'll then use your soft rag to gently clean all external surfaces of the scope. To disconnect the scope, turn off the power, disconnect the suction hose, disconnect the video cable, the water cable, and gently pull the scope out of the processor. Always place the soaking cap on the scope when it's not in use. The most important part of caring for your endoscope is leak testing. Catching a leak early is the difference between a complete rebuild on a scope and a small bending rubber repair. Attach the leak tester to the end of the soaking cap. Make sure it's locked on. Make sure the cap is tight. Using the hand pump, pump the scope up until the gauge is in the test area. Watch the gauge and make sure it doesn't drop. If it doesn't drop after a few seconds, you're ready to submerge the scope. Each scope comes with a cleaning adapter. Simply remove the air, water, and suction valves along with the biopsy port cap. With the small end up, attach the cleaning tubing to the control body of the scope. Make sure it's locked on. The cleaning adapter for the bronchoscope is a little different. Remove the suction valve, remove the biopsy port cap, insert the black end into the suction hole, attach the lure lock to the biopsy channel. With the leak tester still holding pressure, it is now safe to submerge the scope. It is important to always be looking for leaks in the endoscope. Using a syringe and your cleaning tubing, flush all air from all channels of the scope. It's easy to have a false positive when you don't remove all air from the scope. Check the scope carefully for any leaks. Most leaks will look like champagne bubbles. Others may be even more prominent. At this point, we're sure there's no leaks. Remove the video hub from this water, release the pressure from the scope, disconnect the leak tester from the soaking cap, double check that the cap is tight, and resubmerge it. Now follow your manufacturer's instruction and add the appropriate amount of enzymatic cleaner to the water. It's important to not add the enzymatic cleaner before leak testing as most enzymatic cleaners can add bubbles to the water which would give you a false positive. Using a soft sponge, thoroughly clean all external surfaces of the scope. At this point, you can disconnect the automatic cleaning channel. Using the supplied cleaning brush, brush each lumen of the scope. Start with the suction and push the brush straight back through the scope. Advance the cleaning brush until it exits through the suction port. Be sure that the bristles are clean. Completely remove the brush, brush this channel of the scope until the brush comes clean three times. Next, at a 45 degree angle, advance the brush down the suction channel of the insertion tube. Be sure the bristles are clean and repeat this step for a total of three times. Lastly, insert the cleaning brush in the biopsy port channel and be sure that it comes out clean. Repeat this step three times as well. Reattach the cleaning tubing to the scope. Be sure that it's attached firmly. Using a 30cc syringe, flush the detergent through the scope. Remove the scope from the cleaning solution and allow it to drain. Place the scope in a second tub filled with clean water. Use the tubing 
to completely flush all enzymatic cleaner from the scope. Flush fresh water for three minutes. Remove the scope from the clean water. Flush air completely through all channels of the scope. Be sure to remove all water from inside the scope. If sterilizing the scope, completely submerge the scope and sterilize. Flush all channels with sterilant to be sure to remove all air from inside the scope. Once the air is removed, allow the scope to soak as per your manufacturer's instructions. After removing the scope from the sterilant, be sure to rinse all sterilant from the scope. Be sure to rinse all channels thoroughly. When hanging the scope, use a syringe with 15 cc's of alcohol. Quickly push 5 cc's of alcohol through each channel. Allow the scope to dry overnight. Now we'll set the endoscopy system up for rigid endoscopy. Start by removing the video signal cable. With the red dot up, attach the camera to the processor. Then insert the male end of the fiber light cable into the processor. Attach the rigid scope to the camera head. Be sure that it is seated properly before you let go. Next, screw in the fiber light cable to the light post on the scope. Turn on the processor. Turn on the light. Next, by either using 4x4s and completely enveloping the tip of the scope, or by using a white balance cup, press the white balance button and allow the processor to white balance. The scope is now ready for use. You can take pictures of your procedure by pressing the button. You can focus the picture by adjusting the focus ring on the camera. The veterinary camera head does not come with a soaking cap. It is not submersible and it is not autoclavable, though it can be gassed. Simply use a soft moistened sponge to thoroughly clean the external surfaces of the camera. The Surgical Direct Veterinary Endoscopy System comes fully functional with a built-in monitor. However, it can easily be upgraded to a much larger monitor. I'll show you how. First. Disconnect the supplied video cable from both the processor and the monitor. Fold down the included monitor. Attach a long DVI cable to the back of the processor. Using the monitor stand on the optional video endoscopy cart, attach a monitor, tighten the two screws, attach a DVI cable to the processor, attach the other end to the monitor, be sure to tighten all four screws and you're ready to go.